Praise the Lord and good morning to everyone. I am so delighted this morning that God has granted us another opportunity to be able to come together on another presentation of Rays of Hope. I am so grateful in my heart for the hope that God has given to me. And I'm quite sure you are grateful for the hope that is within you. God really is the only one that can give us real hope and expectation for future things that lies ahead of us. This morning, I am excited in my spirit, in my heart, that God has granted us another opportunity to be able to come together once again. I trust that you are prepared to receive the Word of God and to be energized by the Word of God and to look to Him continuously with an attitude of hope and expectation because our God never disappoints. Our God is always timely. Our God is a God that fulfills his promises and all of his promises are yea and amen. So I am grateful this morning to be able to bring to you another presentation of Rays of Hope that is sponsored by Region 2 of the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ and Apostle Robert L. Sanders Christian Academy located in Liberia, West Africa. And I am hopeful this morning that God will speak to our hearts and take us to higher heights and deeper depth in him. I want you to continue to pray for the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, Region 2, and uh, the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ International. God has been gracious to us to allow us to be in existence over 100 years and counting. And I give God all the praise and all of the glory and all of the honor for how he has blessed us and caused his face to shine upon us. And I'm grateful to the Lord for allowing us to have an outstanding Christian academy located in Liberia, West Africa. God has blessed the staff, the God has blessed the student body, and there's a young man that served as the administrator, Minister James Marley. And I want you to continue to pray for him, pray with him, that God will continue to bless the uh, Christian Academy and I want you, if you would, to be a supporter of the Christian Academy uh, if the Lord lays it on your heart. You can support the Christian Academy uh, through your gift by using Cash App and using the dollar sign Robert L. Sanders Sr., and when you do that, note it for the Christian Academy. And I will be able to continue to support uh, the school that, is, that bears my name, Apostle Robert L. Sanders Christian Academy. What an honor it is to serve young minds. And I thank God for the staff that, uh, serve there. Uh, Pastor Wee is 
the local pastor that serves there and uh, Minister James Marley is the uh, ed school administrator uh, doing an outstanding job. And I give our God all the praise and all of the glory. Let us now bow our heads in a word of prayer. Prayer is always in order. Each time we have the opportunity of coming together on another presentation of Rays of Hope, I look forward to sharing with you from the Word of God. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, we are so grateful this morning, Lord, that you have allowed us once again to be able to connect again on this platform. Thanking you, Lord God, for rays of hope. And we pray, God, that you would bless us daily and lead us, guide us, direct us, and cause your face to shine brightly upon us. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, Father, I ask that you would bless each one of our bishops, our pastors, our local assemblies in region two of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless us, Lord, that we might be the people that you have chosen us to be. Father, we pray that you would bless the church of our Lord Jesus Christ international. And Father, bless all the people of God, universal, in the name of Jesus the Christ. And remember, O oh God, in a special way, the Christian Academy that is located in Liberia, West Africa, Apostle Robert L. Sanders Christian Academy. Bless the staff, all of the teachers, and bless each one of the students. We ask it in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And let the people of God say amen and amen. Again, I thank God for each and every one of you that have taken the time out of your schedule to join with me. And so many of you join me every Sunday morning at this hour, 11.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. I want you to know I appreciate you so very much. I appreciate your participation. I appreciate uh, uh, Lady Hopkins for making notes as we study the Word of God. And I give God praise, and I give him glory, and I give him the honor. In the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Now, let's get into our study today. Our foundational scripture uh, will be found in the book of John's Gospel, chapter 1. We will continue our study on understanding God's grace understanding God's grace. There are many facets of the grace of God, and it's important for us to understand those different facets. And we know uh, in our study that God's grace uh, comes from God. It's a gift to the people of God. And it's important for us to understand God's grace is the reason why God laid it on my heart to share with you that we might understand and appreciate God's grace the more. In the book of John's Gospel, chapter 1, uh, beginning at verse 15 through verse number 18, is our foundational scripture. Join me uh, in your Bibles, uh, and read along with me if you would. Notice John chapter 1, getting at verse 15 through verse number 18, it says, John bear witness of him 
and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. That's John the Baptist. And verse 16 says, And of his fullness have all we receive, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, sanctified in our hearts. We will continue our study this morning on the subject matter, understanding God's grace. Now, if you have been with me, you have a few notes that you have taken. And uh, the first note, understanding God's grace, note number one, the grace that is in Christ Jesus is a saving grace. The grace that is in Christ Jesus is a saving grace. And that's found in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to verse number 9. Note number 2. The grace that is in Christ Jesus is a sufficient grace. A sufficient grace. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. Note number three, the grace that is in Christ Jesus is a stimulating grace. Stimulating grace that is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 9 to 11. 1 Corinthians 15, 9 to 11. And I want to share with you this morning a new note. Note number four. The grace that is in Christ Jesus is a serving grace. A serving grace. The grace that is in Christ Jesus is a serving grace. Grace. That's note number four. Now, it is important to keep in mind that the grace of God is a gift that comes from God himself to his people. Grace is undeserved. Grace is unmerited, and grace is unearned. It's important to understand that when we talk about the grace of God. The Word of God says, "Is by grace are ye saved through faith. And that is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So we are saved by grace through faith. And that is a gift of God, and it's not of ourselves. So we can take no credit under no circumstances for God's grace. God's grace is a free gift, a gift that emanates from God. So in our study, understanding the grace of God, and the new note that I'm giving to you this morning which is note, note number four, the grace that is in Christ Jesus is a serving grace. 
a serving grace. And that's the grace to serve, if you will, to serve. And I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12. Let us look at the serving grace that was in Christ Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. Verse 28 and verse 29. Everything that we do for God in our serving him really requires God's grace. We can do nothing of ourselves praise the name of our God, that is beneficial toward our relationship with God. It all is contingent upon the grace of God. We are not capable of serving a perfect God apart from his grace because we are saved by his grace. Now, there is a serving grace that was in Christ Jesus, as I want to show you in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and verse 29. Look what verse 28 says. It says, wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. I think that is very plain. But what I want you to see, children of God, the serving grace that is in Christ Jesus, that we are gifted with as children of God. Notice again, verse 28 of Hebrews 12, it says, wherefore we receiving a kingdom. There's a kingdom in our future, and there's a kingdom that is within us. Are you listening, children of God? The kingdom that is within us is not meat and drink, but is joy and righteousness and peace in the Holy Ghost. So the kingdom is within, and there is a kingdom to come. Are you listening? The kingdom as stipulated here in verse 28, wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. Make a note of the word, acceptably, with reverence and godly fear. We cannot, apart from the grace of God, serve God acceptably. Because, remember, we were sinners. And being sinners... We were saved by grace. So now we can serve God and our serving will be acceptable to God. Why? It is because of the grace of God. We were separated from God prior to salvation because we were sinners. Sinners 
was separated from God, although God loves sinners and he wants every sinner to be saved. Every unbeliever, he wants to be saved. So now it's to understand the grace of God. It is important in our lives as believers. So as verse 28 says, it says, whereby we receiving a kingdom, that is the rule of God, which cannot be moved. Whatever God does is unmovable. It is permanent. It is established. It says, which cannot be moved. Notice the admonishment. Let us, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Now, what we do in our serving is acceptable to God because of the grace of God. God receive our serving of him is accepted. God receives it. We do it with reverence. Reverence. A godly respect for God. God should always be reverent. Reverence. Respected. Appreciated. Honored. Because of who he is. There is no other God that is real and authentic but our God, who is from everlasting to everlasting. He has no beginning. He has no ending. Our God always was. And we are to serve him. He is the architect the designer, the creator of the universe and everything that is in it. As Psalms 24 so plainly says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. And even said a cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. So children of God, as sons and daughters of God, we have the grace to serve him. And when we serve him, our service to him will be acceptable because of the grace of God. This is important. Sinners now transform by the grace of God, the power of God can now serve the one and true God and our serving will be acceptable to God. And our attitude in doing so, it is with reverence and godly fear. When we approach God, we should know that we are approaching the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We should realize that he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. And his only begotten son gave his life. If you remember, he said, when he walked the earth, when he was facing the cross of Calvary, he said, no man taketh my life. I am able to lay it down and I'm able to take it up again. And we know that has already taken place some 2,000 years ago. 
And now we are living in the 21st century. And we have the serving grace of God that we receive from Jesus Christ. So we can serve him. And our serving of him is acceptable. And we do it reverently with godly fear. In other words, God is in a class by himself. And in that God is in a class by himself, he should be respected at all time as such. Whatever we do for him, whatever your assignment is, whatever your gifting and calling is, when we come before our God, serving him in the capacity that we have been chosen to serve, always do it consciously, intentionally, with the attitude of gratitude of what he has done for us. And when we do so, our serving will be acceptable to God, predicated upon the grace of God in our attitudes, our mindsets, should be done reverently, godly, that God will be glorified and magnified. Don't be casually serving God. Remember, he is holy. And the word said, be holy because he is holy. And in that we are saved, we are holy. We have received from him the gift of righteousness, which makes us the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And even our righteousness is a gift. It's not ours. It's what we have received from Jesus Christ. This is why, children of God, it is so important to expand our knowledge, our understanding of Jesus Christ, because he is our life. Jesus is our life. Jesus is the wisdom of God. Jesus is the revelation of God. Jesus is the very... Son of God, Jesus reflects all God the Father is. This is why he said to one of his disciples on one day, when one of his disciples asked him, show us the Father, and it was suffice us. Jesus said, have I been so long time with you? And you don't know me yet? When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? In other words, Jesus reflects the very heart of God, reflects the very mind of God, the very thoughts of God, the very love of God. Everything is in him. Praise the name of our God. And as our knowledge and our uh, experience and our relationship grows, we will become all that God has created us to be. Not settling where we are, but we want to be all that God has ordained for us to be. Not just a little, all. In other words, don't Accept a slice of bread when you can have the whole loaf. Praise the name of our God. God wants you and God wants me 
to understand the grace of God and realize that the grace that is in Christ Jesus is a serving grace. And we see it in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and verse 29. Look at it once again, and we will go to the next aspect of grace. Hebrews 12, 28 says, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom, a kingdom that comes from God, which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Why? Verse 29 says, for our God is a consuming fire. We will not be consumed because of the grace of God. We will remain. We will live throughout eternity with God. And I think that is so awesome to even have the thought to realize how gracious God is in saving us and blessing us to serve the purposes of God. It's, it's, it's amazing, children of God, of the graciousness of God. And we should never forget God's graciousness, God's love, God's kindness toward us. Can the church say amen? Somebody need to give God praise right now for the serving grace of God. When you serve him, you serve him by his grace. It's not your strength. It's not your knowledge. It's not your wisdom. It's his grace. It's his grace, which is undeserved, unmerited, unearned. It's a gift from God. Let the church say amen and amen. Note number five. Note number five. The grace that is in Christ Jesus is a establishing grace. Establishing grace. The grace that is in Christ Jesus is a establishing grace. Establishing grace. That's in Christ Jesus. I tell you, everything we need is in Jesus. And Jesus gives us what we need. And I want you to Stay in the book of Hebrews, but go to chapter 13 of Hebrews. So we look at the establish in grace. That's another facet of the grace of God. Establishing grace. Hebrews 13, 7 to 9. Hebrews 13, seven to nine, to look at the establishing grace. It's an action word. It's a word of action. Establishing. Establishing. If anybody can establish us, it is God himself, and he does it with establishing grace. Establishing grace. Look at what Hebrews 13, 7 to 9 says. Look what it says. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow. 
considering the end of their conversation. Considering the end of their conversation. Then verse 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus Christ never changes. Same yesterday, today, and forever. With that kind of attribute, we can put our trust in God and we can be established in him because he changes not. Look at verse number 9 of Hebrews 13. Look at what it says. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Did you get that? This we're talking about establishing grace. Establishing grace. And Jesus Christ gives to us establishing grace. Are you listening? He is the one who causes us to be established. Established. We are rooted and grounded by him. And whatever he does, it is settled. It's permanent. Remember just for a moment, how Psalms number one reads? Psalms number one. Blessed is the man. <laughs> Praise the name of our God. We are blessed. That standest not in the way of sinners. No, seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Then it said, ye shall be like a tree planted or established. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. That's what happens when we are established by God. He plants us. He establishes us by his grace. Are you listening? We have many people that speak into our lives in our growth and development. But it's the Lord who establishes us with his grace. Are you listening? Yes, we have teachers we have counselors, we have advisors that play major parts in our lives. But guess what? No one can establish us like the establishing grace of God. Are you listening, children of God? This is important. The Lord says in Psalms 1, ye shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, planted in the place where God knows you can flourish, grow, and develop. And he said, your, your, your leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. He said, the ungodly are not so but are like the chaff that the wind drives away. But when God 
establishes you with his grace. You are unmovable, unshakable. And Jesus said, no one can pluck you out of my hands. Why? You've been established by the grace of God, by God himself. So in the process of growth and development, God blesses us, but we are established by his grace. Look at, the, look at the verses of scripture again in Hebrews 13. I want you to get it, children of God, because God wants you to have the confidence and the faith and the trust to know that you have establishing grace that comes from Jesus Christ. Look at what verse 7 of Hebrews 13 says again. Remember them which have the rule over you. That's respect. Remember the pastors, the elders, the bishops, the one who have the rule over you. They're not your Lord now. They are just assisting you in your journey, in your walk. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their consider, uh, conversation. Are you, are you listening? They are imitating the life of Jesus, those who have rule over you. Consider their conversation. Con consider their uh, and imitate their faith. And then he says in verse 8, this is solid. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. So with that in mind, verse 9 says, be not carried about with divers, divers or various and strange doctrines or teachings. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, the grace that comes from God, the gospel of grace that comes from God. Remember, the Bible said the law came by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So we don't want to be all over the map in our teaching. We want our teaching to be anchored in the grace of God. Because one cannot succeed without God's grace. And Jesus made that very plain. He said, without me, you can do nothing. So then, if that's the case, and it is, then everything we do should be done by the grace of God. By grace are ye saved through faith. And it's not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And so... The Lord is letting us know that there is a establishing grace that is in Jesus Christ that is designed to establish you in the grace of God, the gospel of grace. We cannot be saved by the law. The law only showed us that we were sinners and we needed a savior. And after the law showed us that we were sinners and needed a savior, Jesus Christ was preached unto us and we receive the message of salvation. And responding to the message of salvation, 
we will transform from sinners to saints. Are you listening, children of God? From sinners to saints. And right now, we are the children of God. Beloved now, are we the sons of God? And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Why? Because we have been established by the grace of God. And God does not want us to be carried about with every wind and every doctrine. God wants us to be rooted and grounded in the grace of God. And when we are rooted and grounded in the grace of God, we shall be like a tree <laughs> planted by the rivers of waters. Children of God, when we are going through hard places, challenging times, troublesome times, we need to be established. We need to be anchored. And guess what? Our lives can be anchored and established by the grace of God in Jesus Christ. This is why serving Jesus is the most important thing we can do as a believer. Why? Because everything that we need is in him. Everything we need is in him. This is why Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. And children of God, it is absolutely positively necessary for us to understand the grace of God and the multifacetedness of the grace of God that comes through Jesus Christ from our Heavenly Father. God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Praise the name of our God. And Jesus wants us to learn of him. Learn of him. Learn of his grace. The graciousness of Jesus Christ to undeserving people like you and me. But guess what? Now we have been adopted into the family of God by the grace of God. And being adopted in the family of God, we have the privilege of calling God Abba, Daddy God. And being adopted into his family, he has privileged us to be heirs of God. Join heirs with Jesus Christ. And as Paul described his life, and we can describe ours as well. Because of the grace of God, we've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's grace. That's grace. Somebody shout, that's grace. That's grace. Can you imagine? Crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ who lives in me, in the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And with that in mind, the grace of God, which passes all understanding, has gripped our hearts and in our hearts. And we are to serve God 
wholeheartedly to the praise and the glory and the honor of God because he loves us. Children of God, my time has, is gone. Praise the name of the Lord. But I want us to pick up where we left off today, understanding the grace of God. There is more where that came from. And I want you to join me on next Sunday at the same time, 11.30 a.m. Invite someone to uh, share with you and share this program with others. You know how to share. You know how to connect with others. Share. The body of Christ need to understand the grace of God. This is why God laid it on my heart to share it with you. Praise the name of our God. And I thank God so very much for each one, each and every one of you. Continue serving him. Continue blessing him. And remember, you are saved by grace through faith. It is not of yourself. It is the gift of God. I thank God so very much for each and every one of you this morning. And I pray God best will be yours for the rest of your life. Father God, in the name of your son, let your blessing rest upon each one of your sons and daughters. Give them the desires of their hearts. I ask it in the name of Jesus, the Christ, our Lord. Thank you so very much for joining me this morning on another presentation of Rays of Hope. We will pick up where we left off today on next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Thank you for being with me today and pray for Region 2 of the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ and the Apostle Robert L. Sanders Christian Academy in Liberia, West Africa. Enjoy the rest of your day and remember God loves you and he care about you and he has shown you through the grace of Jesus Christ. God bless. Have a blessed day.